3.3 covers the characteristics of polynomial functions in factored form. Isn't that a mouthful? We're going to call it graphing polynomials. And if you go to my PibiWiki site, I have a link there for this handout called Graphing Polynomials. And it has all these practice ones at the bottom, which I'm going to do with you. So first we need to understand how, when we go to graph them, what are we looking for? Now in the previous lesson we talked about um, positive and negative leading coefficients and this little part is going to talk about the types of roots. Now um, in some textbooks they call it an order, um, the order of the root and you've probably heard it before as double root, single root, triple root. So that's what I have here, but just to note that when you get to the textbook and they say of order two, they just mean a double root, or of order three means a triple root. Okay, so here's a quadratic that has two single roots, and you would know it has a negative leading coefficient because it's concave down, and it's also starting in quadrant three and ending in quadrant four. This one has one double root. Now remember, a double root comes down, it touches the x-axis, or I used to say kiss the x-axis and go right back up. Um, a single root, this function here, this is, would be a cubic function. It has a positive leading coefficient because it's going in the same direction as a positive line. If you went from end to end, it's going up. It has one single root here, that means it crosses the x-axis, and one double root here. The next graph here has a triple root. Now triple roots are a little tricky to draw. Um, as it goes through the x-axis, it actually has the x-axis as a tangent to the graph at that point. So you can kind of flatten it on here and then squiggle it back up. Now again, it's going from quadrant three to one, so it would be a positive leading coefficient for an odd degree function. This is a triple root, so it would be a cubic function. Here's another example. It's starting here, ending here. Now, because the ends are going in the same direction, you know it has to be an even degree function, just like a quadratic. Only this, because you can see it has a single root, a triple root, that means four roots, so it would be a negative quartic function. And finally, this one here, this is called the um, partial factoring and shift method. We're going to use that in some of the um, exercise here. Let's take a look at the roots. It has a single root here. It could have had a double root and then was shifted up three. So that helps you to sketch them. Now remember these are curve sketches. These are not accurate. Well, they're accurate to some degree, but not perfectly accurate. You would also need some other points. So we're going to graph functions a to j using the method of single, double roots, triple roots, the sign of the coefficient of the dominant term, that's the leading coefficient, as discussed in the last lesson. If the function does not factor easily, then we're going to use the partial factoring and shift method. Show all roots, x-intercepts clearly, and show the y-intercept. Okay, so I have all of these functions here, um, again, this handout is on my PBWiki site. I'll put the link to it on your note. Okay, so let's go to it here. Here we have a function x squared minus 3x. I want you to sketch it. Now you know, first of all, you know that it is a quadratic. So it has, it's even. So it's quadratic. Just take a look. We know the end behavior. It's going to start in this quadrant and end in this quadrant. It has positive leading coefficient, positive LC. Now I need to know what the roots are. So that requires you to be able to factor and hopefully you remembered how to factor this. You'd find a common factor of x and you'd have x minus 3. Now I can very easily tell you where the roots are. <clears throat> they are all single roots single roots, right, order of one, so this would be zero and three. So I've got a dot at zero, a dot at three. It's a quadratic, positive leading coefficient. 
I know quadratics have a symmetry about the the axis of symmetry and I know that it's going to go something like that. Now I don't know how far down it's going to go. The y-intercept is zero and that's a pretty not bad sketch. Okay the second function here minus x cubed plus x I can take out a negative x and I would have x squared minus 1. Right, so when I expand make sure you can double check. Now x squared minus 1 can be factored as well. So that's going to give me an x plus 1, x minus 1 difference of squares. So now I know what all my zeros are going to be. It's 0, minus 1, and 1. So minus 1, 0, and 1. Now it has a negative leading coefficient and it is cubic. So negative leading coefficient and cubic function. So if it has a negative leading coefficient, I'm thinking about what direction it's going to go in. Right? So negative cubic means it's going to go this way. Right? It has to start in this quadrant and here, just like a negative line. So I'm going to start my function here. These are all single roots, so I have to pass through the x-axis up and down. Now the height here, um, you could actually do some values if your teacher asked you to, like something between 0 and 1, like take a half, which would be probably the height, the maximum height here. But these are sketches again. Okay, letter C, what are my zeros? What is the degree? So the degree, don't be fooled, it's not 2, because if I expanded this, I would have a cubic function. So I have a degree of 3. The leading coefficient, if I multiplied x times x squared, would be positive, positive leading coefficient, degree 3. Zeros are 0 and 4. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting 0, 4 on my graph. It has a degree of 3 and positive. So degree of 3 and positive means it's going to go like a positive line. Okay, just think of your lines. That's all you need when it's an odd degree, odd 3. So I'm going to start in this quadrant. This is a single root or order 1. Okay, so that means I pass through it. This one here, 4, is a double root or root of order 2. So I'm going to come down. I'm not going to cross the axis and I'm going to go right back up. So you can see I now have a function that's starting in quadrant 3, ending in quadrant 1. It's degree of 3. I have two, three roots and they were 0 and 4. Okay, moving on to this one here. x to the fourth minus x squared. Now I can um, func uh, factor that, of course. So I'm going to take out an x squared. That's going to give me x squared minus 1. And this, of course, factors as well. Difference of squares, x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, so I have a degree of 4. Degree of 4 means a quartic function. So degree 4, so I know it's even degree. Positive leading coefficient means it's going to start here and end here, like the parabola would have. Okay, I'll just sketch that on so you think about where it's going to start and end. It has a double root at zero. I'll put that on. And it has single roots or roots of order one at plus one and minus one. So I have to go through these three dots. I'm going to start here, end here. This one, this minus one, this is um, a single root or order one, which means I'm going to pass through the x-axis. This one, I'm going to come up and just touch the point, go back down, oops, I gave you a little space, and then go back up. That's pretty, uh, not very symmetrical looking thing, but you get the idea. So it's kind of the W shape. Notice my end behavior for a degree 4 with a positive leading coefficient, positive leading coefficient, 
and my zeros again were 0, minus 1, 0, and you might want to write for yourself order 2, and plus and minus 1, order 1. Okay, is it coming along? I hope so. Okay, this one here, this, you don't know how to factor that, right? Not yet. So what we can do is partial factoring. So this part here can be factored by itself, and this can be what we call the shift. So I'm going to factor this. I'm going to take out an x. It's going to give me x squared minus 1 plus 4. So don't worry about this yet. We're going to graph this function and then shift it up 4. So this is going to give me x plus 1, x minus 1 when I completely factor it. And then plus 4. So I haven't changed the equation. I'm just going to use these zeros to help um, graph it. Now it's a cubic function. So it's degree 3. And you probably should write these things down as you're doing them. And it's going to have zeros of 0, minus 1, and 1. And they're all order 1, or single roots. So the first thing you want to do is put on these zeros. Now these aren't going to be the actual zeros of the final graph because I'm going to shift it up 4 in the end. So positive leading coefficient. Degree 3 means it's going this way. And I'm going to start in this quadrant. So get your pencil down there. These are all single roots, so I'm going to pass through every one of them like this. And finally, to finish the graph, I'm going to shift everything up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It stays here. I'm going to move this up 4 as well. So my graph is going to be up here like this. So that's what we call a shift, partial graphing and a shift. So this is going to move everything up four units. Okay, the last one on this page, we have x cubed and x minus 1. So the degree of the function first, if you expanded this, you would have 3 times 1 is degree of 4. Positive leading coefficient. So that means I'm going to start in this quadrant. So think of your parabola. And I'm going to end here. Start and end. I have a triple root at 0 and a single root at 1. So this is order 3. 0, order 3. That means I'm going to go through it. I'm going to pass through the x-axis, but I'm going to flatten it as I go through. And this is 1 is a single root. Or you might say order 1. Just get used to the order or a single root. Okay, so I have to start here, up here. I'm going to come down and I'm going to make my triple root. So I'm kind of using that x-axis as a tangent at that point. I pass through and then I'm going to pass back up through this one. So I'm ending in the right quadrants. Okay, so, so far so good, I hope. Okay, this one, you want to figure out the degree first. Okay, so what's the degree here? This is squared, and I'm multiplying by another x, so it's going to be degree 3. It has a negative leading coefficient, so you have to be careful when you're expanding to make sure. So negative leading coefficient, and my zeros are 0, that's order 1, and the other 0 would be 3 order 2. That's a double root. Now remember double roots or fourth roots. You come down and you just touch the x-axis and go right back up. So degree 3 negative leading coefficient. Think of your negative line. The zeros are 0 of order 1. So I have to pass through that one and 3 with an order of 2. 1, 2, 3. So I'm starting here, so it goes through this one. This is just a single root. Comes down, goes up to here, 
Remember, I want to end down here. So remember, order of two, you come up, you just touch it and you go right back down. So you can see my end behavior matches the end behavior of that linear function. Okay, and this one, again, this is one where you're going to do a partial factoring in shift. So I'm going to choose these two. I'm going to leave this alone. I'll be shifting up to at the end. So if I take out a 5x, I would have 5x minus 3 plus 2. 5x minus 3, that's not 5x. Whoops! x minus 3. Okay. x minus 3 and then plus 2. So the order, the degree, sorry, the degree is 2. It's a quadratic. So that means I'm going to start here and end here, right, like this. And I have zeros of 0 and 3 are order 1 roots. So I'm going to pass through those. So 0, whoops, 0 and 3, 1, 2, 3. So I have a quadratic positive leading coefficient. I'm going to sketch it like this. And then I'm going to move it up to 1, 2. So here's my parabola. Now, I don't know whether or not it's still going to cross the x-axis here or not, but this is shifted up two units. So I'd have to really figure out what this point is and then see if it's um, above or below the x-axis. There's sketches, so remember sketches. Okay, y equals x to the fourth minus one. Oh, you need a lot of factoring here, don't you? So if I did x squared plus one, x squared minus 1, and then you see I also have to factor this again, right? Okay, so that gives me um, x squared plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. Now, this one here, x squared plus 1, oh, let's just say first of all that we have um, degree of 4, degree 4, and we have zeros of plus and minus 1 that are single roots. This one, I can't solve for this, right? x squared plus 1, if I set that to 0, I'd say x squared equals negative 1, x equals the square root of negative 1. No, so those aren't, this is um, non-real roots. So the only roots I'm worried about are plus and minus 1. So I have 1, and minus 1, and my function's going to go like this. So when you do a quartic function, you want to make them a little flatter. Now again, this had a positive leading coefficient, so start and end in these quadrants. And the very last one we're going to do, this one is looks a little more complicated, has all these x's and stuff. So again, we're going to leave this off, and we're going to factor this by taking out how about an x? So I have x squared plus 2x minus 2, and then minus 2. So this one, I know one of the roots is 0. This one, I need to know, does it have any roots? And remember when you used to use the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, to just to determine whether or not there are roots to this part of the function. So... Um, b squared minus 4, so you remember that came from the quadratic equation under the radical sign, but the discriminant just tells you how many roots there would be. So b is 2, a is 1, and c is minus 2. So I can see that this is going to be 4 plus 8, that's going to be 12. So that means there are two real roots to this part of the function as well. So it's a cubic function with a positive leading coefficient. So that means we're going like this, right? Just think of your lines, and I'm going to put in the zeros. So I have one root is zero. The other two, I'm not sure what they are, but they are definitely, um, it does go through these other two points. So I'm going to make my sketch like this. I'm going to go through, through 
and then in the end I'm going to shift it all down to okay, down to for that shift okay so that's pretty much how you could do quick sketches and it they, this little exercise becomes very very helpful um, not only for advanced functions but also for calculus so you know where things should be and that way you can always tell if you've made a mistake now the last thing you have to do in this section is to define an equation of a function so they say determine the equation of a quartic function now, you did this with um, quadratics back in grade 10 and 11 so I'm giving you the zeros and a y-intercept so the function is going to be like y equals some a value which I don't know and then I have some roots right that I can put in I have the zeros so if this is negative 1 of order 3 then this is going to be x plus 1 of order 3 and the other root is 1 so the other root being 1 that's going to be x minus 1 now in order to find the a I need a point and they do give you the clue here it says it has a y-intercept of minus 2 so that means the point is x is 0 y is minus 2 and that's going to help me determine a so I plug in minus 2 for y a 0 plus 1 cubed 0 minus 1 and I get minus 2 equals a 0 plus 1 is 1 1 cubed is 1 0 minus 1 is minus 1 and I get negative 2 equals negative a so that means a is equal to 2 and then in the end you plug that back in to give your equation y equals 2 x plus 1 cubed times x minus 1 okay I hope you found this helpful um, this is a handout that I do every year with my students it's not in the textbook um, it's not an assignment from the textbook but will help you do the work in the textbook because you'll have a better understanding of roots leading coefficients and degrees hope you found it helpful